Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at Rotate 3 from List 1, and this is a Python solution. Now, uh, for this solution, I actually have all the code already written. I'm just going to comment things in to explain the process, because this process is a really important idea of swapping values. So, give an array of ints like 3, return an array with the elements rotated left. So, 1, 2, 3 yields 2, 3, 1. So, what we can see is we're taking the value in index 1 and moving it to index 0, the value from index 2 to index 1, and then we're taking the first element at index 0 and shifting it to index 2. And we can look at these examples. So like I said, I'm going to do three approaches here. The first approach is I'm going to do the incorrect approach, and, and students often make this mistake. And the reason is, is they're thinking like a person, not a computer. If, if you overwrite a value, it's gone. And so what, what happens is students will go and they'll do this. The first thing they'll do is they'll say, you know, the current state is this, and then they'll include this line. So they say nums at zero is equal to nums at one. So what that results in is this new state in the list that looks like this. So we've taken nums at one and we've copied it into nums at zero. And that's right. And then they do this. So I end up taking nums at one becomes nums at two. So nums at one, which is here, becomes nums at two. So we get two, three, three. And then they say, okay, well, now I have to take the, very, the, the value in index 0 and put it in index 2. So they say nums at 2 is equal to nums at 0. But here's where they've made the mistake. They've forgotten about the fact that at the very first step, when you overwrote that first element, it's gone. It's disappeared. Peter doesn't remember what it is, so you end up with 2, 3, 2. And then they return nums, and of course it's wrong. And notice in every case, the first two elements are correct, but it's that last element with the exception of this case where it just happens to work out. And that's how students will sometimes do this. So there's a little fix here. And the little fix is, is you have to actually remember what nums at zero is before you do this. And then you take that value and then copy it back in. So the first thing you do is you make this variable temp and you store nums at zero there. And that has no change in the list. But now when you do this, so nums at zero becomes nums at one, our list becomes two, two, three. And then we say nums at 1 becomes nums at 2. We get 2, 3, 3. And then when we say nums at 2, we want to overwrite the last element. We don't use the first element. We use temp. And that's going to result in, that should be 2, 3, 1, I believe. And then we return our nums. And there it works. Um, it's a really simple idea once you see it, but it's a very common mistake when students first start learning to program. Okay, now our last approach um, is, is a way that a lot of students do this the first time. What they simply do is they make a new, new list and then they just copy the values directly over. So in this way, you're not affecting, you're not affecting nums at all. You're just taking you know, nums at one becomes the first element, nums at two becomes the second element, and nums at three becomes the third element. And in fact, this is actually a better approach knowing nothing about, about the problem. And let me explain why. So one of the things is you become a bit more of an advanced program and you start thinking about post conditions. And that is the conditions of, of the various things you pass into your function. Now, a list is what's called a reference variable. And what that means is when you pass a list into a function, any changes to that list persist when the function is done. Now, if you're a new programmer, this, this is not the right way to learn this concept. But for those of you that are just kind of hopping in here, if you're in my class, we talk about this quite a bit, is here's the thing. You have to be very careful if you're modifying a list that you've passed in as a parameter. Because if this function was part of a larger program, that change would actually persist past the function. So of these three approaches, this first approach is just wrong. The second approach is good, but we just need to bear in mind we're modifying our, our path parameter nums. And the third approach is probably the best knowing nothing else. I hope this video helped. Have a great day.